state sponsor of terror. We know that they also have been using their surrogates and maybe even the money that Obama and Biden gave them to fight proxy wars. When that line was crossed at the end of December last year, the U.S. did respond. They had an opportunity. They took out Iran's top terrorists responsible for killing Americans on the ground in the most brutal of ways inside of Iraq during that conflict. Now the mullahs have escalated tonight the conflict in a major way. This is their doing. For example, they're the ones that shot down the drone. They're the ones that have tried to stop the free flow of oil, the lifeblood of our economy, back uh, at market prices. And they're the ones that also have been after America now since 1979. They've been attacking the civilized world since 1979 when they held our fellow Americans hostage at our own embassy. And more recently, they shot that drone out of the sky. And more recently, they captured international oil tankers in the very geopolitically strategic area that narrow Straits of Hormuz, by the way, to impact the free flow of the lifeblood of every economy in the world. Then they attacked the Saudi Arabian's oil processing facilities. Now, as the world's number one state sponsor of terror, they have coordinated deadly attacks all over the world. They fight these proxy wars. They fund terror. They actively try to wipe Israel off the face of the planet. They state it, I believe them, because that's what fanatical regimes do. Under the guidance of their top terrorists, Iran has been responsible for the deaths of hundreds of Americans. But now, the evil Soleimani is dead. Over the weekend, General David Petraeus even suggested that this strike, taking out Soleimani, was bigger than bin Laden and al-Baghdadi. And today, Defense Secretary Mark Esper said that a massive attack against Americans orchestrated by Soleimani was days away. Not weeks, days. Remember the 99% in the intelligence community that I, guys, the intelligence community that I have always talked about that do a great job every day putting their lives at risk? Remember those guys? They did their job. A huge victory for our intelligence community. A huge victory for also our military and the president. He showed great patience. And by the way, we already know that in the case of Soleimani, he was responsible for the attack on our embassy in Baghdad. Remember, before he even got to the airport in Baghdad, we do know that the words, oh, Soleimani is our leader. Because he orchestrated the terrorist attack, just like he is best friends with the leaders of Hezbollah. Now, we also know tonight that he had a close relationship with the leaders of Hezbollah. And we all know that he killed, injured, maimed hundreds of U.S. troops in the region. In fact, he directed a terrorist campaign to blow up Americans in the Middle East using an Iranian-made weapon called explosively formed penetrators. In other words, EFPs, pay close attention. This is what the Iranians did to our troops in the Iraq war. Now, the EFPs, well, they're IEDs, but far more sophisticated and far more deadly. In a book entitled The Long Walk, Iraqi war veteran Brian Kastner, this is how he described the 2006 attack. Quote, it took both legs off a soldier and one from a gunner. After the soldiers were medevaced out, there was still one foot left in the Humvee. Soleimani was the one that orchestrated that. He was the evil terrorist. Soleimani is now dead, blown to bits and pieces by a U.S. drone. His remains reportedly flew coach in a commercial airline back to Iran. And now we're just finding out how stupid the leaders of Iran really are. Because if they actually think they can attack Americans and get away with it, uh, I think they need to think again. Do they actually think that they can kill our brave men and women abroad in our embassy and get away with it? Do they think they can fund terrorism all around the globe and get away with that? Do they think they can commit economic terrorism and try and impact the free flow of the Lord life Jesus of every economy in the world and get away with that? There is a massive price to pay. You don't get to do what they did tonight. They have now been begging. The president wanted to talk and wants peace. And they're going to get hit hard. Their hostility will now be met with the full force of the greatest, most advanced, most sophisticated military this world has ever seen. As a former CIA station chief, Dan Hoffman, pointed out, any hostile action by Iran would be regime suicide. So let me be perfectly clear. I don't want boots on the ground. We don't need boots on the ground. The president has been clear. He's not putting boots on the ground. 
might need a few more intelligence people, might need to protect very specific areas. And I know the Washington swamp creatures, they like to send our kids to war. Then they put them on the battlefield. Then they politicize the war. And then they say, never mind. We can't allow that to ever happen again. Without boots on the ground whatsoever, the United States will be ready to decimate Iran's rogue leaders with our superior, superior weaponry. So, by the way, if you happen to be, as Lindsey Graham tweeted out over the weekend, if you work in an Iranian refinery, you might want to get a new job. I'd start now. Now, the three major refineries could soon go up in flames. Their illicit nuclear sites may finally be annihilated. And the mullahs of Iran, well, they may want to watch and keep a watchful eye on the sky tonight as they look from their bunkers where I'm sure they are hiding. Powerful U.S. military forces, they are in position tonight. We can report six B-52 bombers are on the way to the region. Multiple carrier groups are already within striking distance, and in a show of force, 52 of the world's most advanced aircraft, the F-35, uh, launched in succession at a U.S. military base. Because of the escalating aggression from this rogue terrorist regime in Iran, the United States is prepared and has been preparing for conflict for years. As Defense Secretary Esper said earlier today, the U.S. does not want war. Clearly, the president doesn't want a war, but we would be prepared to finish it. Still, we want peace. We are not going to have a long, protracted conflict any further, and I don't think we should have one boot on the ground. So for all you people trying to create this binary choice, oh, it's either we let them attack us and kill Americans and attack our embassy and shoot out our drones and take uh, tankers hostage uh, and take out our competitors' oil facilities or it's boots on the ground. No, that's not how it works. We have other options, thankfully, thanks to the greatest military force on Earth, and I'm sure they're prepared to use them. Joining us now with the very latest, our very own Jennifer Griffin tonight. Jennifer, you reported very early this was happening. All credit to you. What are you hearing? I am hearing, thankfully.